in to you a little bit or something? Okay, what I do is I do a lot of uh, vulnerability analysis on NT. We've uh, done penetration testing on NT uh, on a variety of government firms. Basically what this uh, is for is for the sysadmins um, or security type people. And it's also for uh, the newbie hacker who wants to learn a little bit more about your system. So as I'm giving this information out, this is, um, this is not only for them, and they're, they're probably going to be paying it more attention than you are uh, as a sysadmin. This is Mr. Nasty, which is me. Doesn't, don't I look like that? Huh? The arms and everything, huh? Okay. Um, <clears throat> and basically what we're going to do is we're using a free tool, okay? It's a free tool called Dump ACL. Have you ever used that? Anybody use Dump ACL? You probably have it on your system somewhere. It's in a little bitty uh, folder up there called Dump ACL. Nobody ever really uses it. They just have it out there, right? Okay, well, we, we've, we've exploited so many systems using that particular tool because we can go out and dump your ACL lists and look at everything that's out there on your machine. And these are like seriously poorly configured machines that are out there. Let me go on. Ba basically what this is, is uh, this is pretty much the application here that you can see. And this is where to get it. And this is where to email me if you, if you really want to ask me another question about this or anything. Pretty much what I, I have an agenda here and, it, and, it, and it pretty much a cause. And I will explain something to you. A lot of you sysadmins who work in areas where you have people who want to stand above the policy. Can you guys hear me okay? You can hear me fine? It's people who want to stand above the policy. And, and I'm going to point out two critical individuals, because there were two here yesterday in, in the Hacksher track, and they were attorneys. One of them is attorneys, and the other one is doctors. These people want to ride above your policy. Your policies say that you need to have stronger passwords, but doctors feel above the law, and they feel like they don't need to have stronger passwords because they need to have access to all these systems. Well, we've been in the hospitals where we could go in and see a doctor logged on five different computers, and he's not even there. But he's got all this information open. What does that have to do with this? Well, if you go and look at his password, it's probably a four-digit password, and it's probably his dog's name or something, okay? But when, when we've gone in and we've told security officers, you need to just shut them down. The, the security officer will tell us, well, we've done that. We've gone over and we've shut down the machine. That doctor goes over to the chief of, secure, uh, of, chief of surgery, and he'll complain. And guess who gets in trouble? The security officer. He gets, his, he gets his butt reamed for doing his job, but the doctor gets away with it. Now, what better way, as a hacker, okay, this is just some more information on dump ACL. I don't like to read from slides. Do you, would you guys rather me read from slides? I could read from slides and it would bore the, the, the death out of you. I'm not going to say any four-letter words. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to. I really did, but no. How is this information will be able to work over Windows 2000? Oh, this works on Windows 2000. It does. It works wonderfully on Windows 2000. If you go over to their website, samarasoft.com, he's got a whole uh, bunch of information over there. You know, he's from a little bitty town in South Texas. I couldn't believe that. I would expect him to be from, like, Silicon Valley or Boston or something. Okay. Um, I'm kind of nervous, so I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant and, uh, and more information. Yeah, go ahead. Password, right. You could you could run passfelt.dll, but you can override passfelt.dll. I mean, that is not the silver bullet. I mean, to this problem, because you, that's right. You could do that, and you could set that up in your policies, and that's very good to do. But then, if you have a doctor that comes in and says, "Hey, I can't remember all of those funky digits," and you better take them off, because if you don't take them off, I'm going to get the chief of surgery to come down, and he's going to crawl down your rear end, and the chief of surgery is going to go over, and he's going to throw policy at you and say, "You know what? Take that stuff off of the system." So where did you go? I mean, where did you get from that? My, my point is, my point is, and it, to any newbie hacker out there, don't identify yourself. I don't care who you are. To any newbie hacker out there, you know, 
It's not the DDoS attacks and the buffer overflow stuff. I mean, those are good to get in what you need to, okay? Into the NT systems and, and probably shut down one to get into another because it's probably blocked by some kind of firewall that's not an NT box. It's probably some Solaris uh, box or something like that out there. But then once you get in the NT machine, don't go over there and set up, a, you know, a, an IRC channel or something stupid that they can track you, you know? I mean, that's, that's ridiculous, you know? Do something good. If you're going to go to jail, which you probably will, you know, you might as well come out. You might as well come out with a little honeypot, right, of your own, right? A couple of ten thousand dollars or whatever. How do you do that? Well, use your imagination a little bit. Doctor's information is privacy. Period. That's all I'll say. Okay. <laughs> you heard what the limit were was with the the lawyers. What was it? Five thousand dollars. So what, $4,999.99? And there's, right? Somebody got the joke. OK. <laughs> All right, what you do is, you want, uh, when you go into dump ACL in your permission reports, you want to get a lot of information off of your system so that you can see how it's set up. All right? This is good for you new system admins. This is good for you people who are taking over a new machine. You know, they all of a sudden the director goes over or the, whoever is in charge and says, okay, now you're, you're in charge of this box. You have no clue what's going on with it. So this is a good thing to run when you first initially get there. If you put this on your machines, I, I suggest you, 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 you limit the permissions to only yourself. And, and again, this is a good reason to have a uh, security officer besides the uh, sysadmin. Sysadmin's got too many other jobs to do. For instance, hey, I don't want to go off on a rant here, but, <laughs> you know, sysadmin's got a lot of work to do. You guys are fixing printer problems and people can't get their monitor up and they can't get their stuff running. I had a guy one time run into the office. He was just scared to death. He had pulled up a, a document on a Word and he was like, I can't get my Word document. I can see it on the screen, but I just can't, I can't, I mean, uh, I know it's up there because I can see the, the header up here. How come I can't get to my Word document? I went over to his desk. And sure enough, there was a Word document. He had a white background. And I could move the cursor around like as, it was, as if it was going through a document. There was like 15, 20 pages. I said, did you just change your font to white? He said, yeah, uh-huh. I said, what color is your background? He said, white. I said, you don't get it yet? So, I mean, those are the problems that you guys are dealing with, right? I mean, you're dealing with a lot of brain dead type of losers out there, right? You know, they have no idea. You know, their job is eight to five. You know, it's not these guys who are sleeping on the floor at night, you know, waiting for the hacker to come in, the Uber hackers to come in, all right? All right, this is a report view. This is all the information that you can get off of, I only have half a screen? But it's a Pentium too. Okay, um, so this is, uh, this, is, this is the report. Can you guys see that okay over there? Probably not, right? Yeah, believe me, it, it'll be, I'll put it on the um, DEF CON uh, place. <laughs> when I get home, not, not, not while I'm here. Um, anyway, this is a report view. This is the type of information that you can't get out of it. Remember, if you're running a, 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 a really big system, you know, you guys that are, uh, have 5,000 or more users on your system, it's going to take a little while. You can run, run it remotely. You don't have to run it on the server, so it doesn't take up so much CPU energy. Yes? Is this free? Yeah. Oh, yeah, by the way, it's free. The question was, is this free? Yes, it is free. Right now, it is free. So if you go out to that site, you can get it for free, okay? So I don't work for them. I just use the tool. Pardon me? URL. URL. Same to you. What? <laughs> What's the URL? The URL is www.samarasoft.com. S-O-M-A-R-S-O-F-T.com. It's on, it's on each one of my slides. Okay, it'll be on each one of the slides. Believe me. Okay, this way, since you can run it remotely, this is just to prove that you can run it remotely. All you have to do is just type in the slash slash and the computer name, and it'll just uh, 
what is it, UNC, you can type in UNC or you can type in the IP address of the other computer and you can run it. Now, because it can be run re remotely, it, the, somebody can probably run it on your machine. I mean, on a, big networks that we've run, you just get on a client side, you go in, establish a null session, boom, you're in, you can start downloading the ACL from there. And I'll, I'll, I'll address that in a second. Pretty much, uh, these are the different categories of the dump ACO reports. But one of the things I want to ask you guys, while this is kind of going up there, and you want to look at policies groups, how many people would run a test on a product uh, production environment? How many people in here would run tests on a production environment? Yeah, you worked for the government then. I found a Fed. Okay. Can you see why the logic in that just doesn't make any sense? You want to run as many tests as you can. The reason being, and the reason why I say this is because going out and running something like this on a, on a machine, do you know how many test accounts we can find? I mean, we can find so many test accounts and, and, the, and they're, they, they remain dormant. They're active, but they just, they're just dormant there. So if you even run passfelt.dll and you did it, is, you know, is this conscientious sysadmin, you know, so that everybody's going to have to comply with this stronger passwords. You're still going to have all these dormant accounts that don't comply that somebody can just change the password on anytime they want to. And usually, these test accounts are run by who? Sysadmins. And usually they're what? They're probably administrative accounts, right? And you know what? Each one of these hackers out here, if they didn't know it, they know it now. So guard them and do what do what it says to do with NT. Change, you know, hide it, decoy that admin account, make it something that it really isn't. So that so that newbie hacker will go after that admin account. Oh, you know what? I went to DEF CON and a guy told me how to get into the NT machine. Now I'm over there and then he's got this little bitty nothing, <laughs> but he thinks he's got something. So let him happy. He's being happy for a while. You just keep track of him. Okay. A lot of times. Uh, this stuff goes by itself. Did I just have to hit a button every once in a while and it'll just start running by itself. On the policies, you know, it dumped, what, five different, five different categories. This is one of the categories. Basically, it's going to tell you when you run this, this makes more sense to you when you get the program. It's, it's like Greek right now. Okay, it was Greek to me when I first saw this. I was like, what does it mean? I don't know. But just believe me, when it's doing this, you'll see it when it comes up with the program. You want to run the, your policies so that you can check to make sure that your policies comply with how your real policy, your written policies are set up, your permissions. You don't, you know, you don't want... <laughs> okay, I, I went into one place and the guys were saying, hey, we got this really cool way of setting up accounts. Okay, and it was a conference I went to last month, and they were teaching they were teaching sysadmins how to set it up. And guess what? The guy was real proud of the fact that he was an MCSE. <laughs> I'm an MCSE. He made sure he stated that, and he says, "Guess what? What we do is when we get all these new people come in because we got a lot of students coming in, in order to save time, we set them up in a guest account." <laughs> So we got 5,000 students that come in every six months and we set them up in a guest account. How safe is that? That's real safe, isn't it? They don't get any acknowledgement out there. <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> okay, this is the policy information. So I, the point there is don't, don't make any assumptions on how, how you're setting this stuff up. Look at this. Pull this information down. You can. By the way, this is all Word. You guys are NT people. I mean Word. This is Windows. You guys are all NT people. Save this as a text column delimited file. You'll know when you go into Save As. Okay? File, Save As. The reason being is because then you can pull this up into something like Excel and you can run a lot of analysis on it really quick. Okay? You know the uh, sort, what is that, sort fast function or something like that in Excel? And it pulls out information that's unbelievable. Okay? <coughs> All right, we'll go to the next one. And this particular category here is uh, group accounts. Th this isn't, th this one isn't as important. It doesn't have a lot of, uh, 
good information, but it's good to know and to keep track of. You know, you don't know if you're, especially if you got 4,000, 5,000 accounts out there, how do you know you've been hacked? How do you know that there's a new account in there? I mean, in some cases, are you the only sysadmin out there in your particular domain? Probably not. You know, I mean, in some of these places, especially if you guys are government people, I know that there's probably, you know, I've seen anywhere between 15 and 25 sysadmins all running around. <laughs> They're running around in different divisions, but on the same domain, and they're installing stuff right and left, and all of a sudden, half of the domain goes down. They don't know who did it. It was their own sysadmins that are doing it. I mean, they're hacking into their own systems and, and crashing them, so they don't, need, they don't need you newbie hackers running any kiddies, uh, script kitties against them. They're doing it on their own. Okay, this is a group of cats. Uh, can't remember what the next one is. Uh, oh, by the way, Hope you guys don't mind. Don't don't try to steal my camera afterwards. I took pictures of the group here, and the reason why I did is because I'm giving this seminar again in uh, Austin, Texas, to a group of uh, government folks. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to show them what they're up against. <laughs> because if the room at at the next conference has got like a smidgen of people here and there, I just want to show them the odds, the ratio. <laughs> you know, they're doomed. Okay, this is the file system permission report. Pretty much it's going to give you all this information um, on your file systems. Um, there's a reg edit, or, yeah, reg edit report that kind of gives, that works alongside this. And you can cha uh, make changes to your reg edit or however you need to um, so that nobody else can get to it. And in a lot of systems that we've seen, they reg, the, ooh, why didn't do that? Oh, well, the reg edit um, is really not set up so it's secure and everybody, ha everybody and their brother has access to it. So, you know, go into your system, use this particular tool. And, you know, I'm emphasizing that, and I, I'm sorry if I'm emphasizing it, but the thing is is that not too many people go in and really take a conscientious look at what their system's doing. Um, if, if you guys are the sysadmins, you know, I'm, I'm pleading with you, please don't also be the security officer as well. I mean, if you don't know what I'm saying, is this, there's a cross-section uh, of duties there. There's not a segregation of duties. I mean, don't, don't be the only one that has to be accountable because, you know, if legal issues come out at you, you're, you know, you, you're boxing yourself in pretty much is what I'm saying. Okay. Boy, I had a lot of things here. Uh, I, another thing that we, what we've seen is a lot of security officers that they put out there, they just kind of pick them at random. You know, there's a guy, he's going to get ready to retire. Or, is, you know, he's, he's got a couple more years in the company before he leaves. And so they put him in there as a security officer. And the guy has no clue. You know, what is a security officer? He doesn't know if he should wear a gun, <laughs> if he should wear a badge. You know, he wants to go to some kind of... Uh, <laughs> Some kind of class on, 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 on TCPIP that he has no clue, that probably has no relationship to what he's doing at all. Um, but to me, what I, the way I look at that is you send somebody out. Has anybody ever gone looking for, um, oh gosh, what is it? I had it on the tip of my tongue earlier. Snipe hunting. So you know what I'm talking about. Is they, they, what they're doing is they're just taking these security officers and they're telling them to go snipe hunting. Well, if you've never gone and seen a snipe, you have no clue to what to look for. It's the same thing with, with hacking and looking for somebody hacking into your system. And I'm not just talking about you newbies out there. I'm talking about the internal people because that's what this tool basically is for, is the internal people who are just kind of clicking around going, you know, how far can I get? How far can I get up there? All right? If you don't know what kind of configuration to look for, you, you're, you're, you're clueless out there, right? I mean, the ISO is clueless. The information security officers are, are just are, are completely clueless. Oh, by the way, I hope I didn't offend any MCSEs out there. <laughs> now, this is a share permission report. This is a real good report because this, this provides you information on your different shares. I mean, and what you want to do is you want to look at segregation of duties. If you don't have a good knowledge of segregation of duties, you know, you might want to get to, with your accounting department and maybe talk to an auditor or something and ask them what, um, 
how to go about a segregation of duties, or maybe run this report and share this with another with, with an auditor to, so that they can help you uh, break this out. Oops. Uh, by the way, the, uh, here's my pointer. The information over here, the save as, that's just a good a rule of thumb. Just save it as that, you know, dot txt or whatever before, so that you know what, what you ran. Just kind of helps you out a little bit there. And uh, as far as these options are concerned, for the permissions and reports, you want to select certain settings or certain certain information here so that it pulls up this stuff. That way when you go back, you can kind of refer back to something like this and it'll tell you what's there. Now this is the share permission report. It's hot in here. Is it hot in here to you guys? Boy, this is, this is awful. Okay, I, I'm going to try to go through this really, really quick so you guys can walk outside because this is, I'm, I'm about to pass out up here. Um, yes? Yeah, you call it what you want to. As far as the, the, the question is, what is the file extension for the column delimited file? You call it what you want to. Basically, it's going to be, you should save it as a TXT file. Okay, th then you can export it, or I'm sorry, import it into Excel. It's, it's really easy. Since it's column delimited, I mean, that little wizard comes up and it just kind of, you just go, yes, 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 and then it, it does the rest for you. Any other questions? Yes. What does it run on? Oh, it will, yes, it, it'll run on, uh, oh, it won't run on like uh, 9x. Okay, it'll run on NT. It'll only run on an NT box because Usually that's where your, your servers are located. One thirty nine, yes. Right. And it'll it'll also run on an alpha box as well. I ran it on an alpha box as well as an Intel machine. So yes. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to put them on the DEF CON slide. I'm going to give them to them when I get back, and that'll be Monday. I'm sorry? Yeah, DT's website. It'll be on his, so you guys can get it up there if you really want to. What I'm also going to put on the side is a couple of documents that'll be in Word. And, you know, I'm sorry for any Unix people out there or whatever, but this is an NT kind of a situation, so it'll all be in DOC f uh, format. And it's how to set up uh, the everyone groups. What, uh, this is another problem that I've noticed with uh, people is setting up everyone groups. A lot of people just copy the everyone and just maybe rename it, but it keeps all the permissions of the everyone group. The problem with that, I mean, you can obviously see if you're trying to separate the receiving department from, say, the accounting department, then there's no, really no segregation except in the name of the group itself, right? All they have to do is just point and click in the network neighborhood and boom, they're wherever they want to go. Um, and if you're a sysadmin, you know, use this along with the, the security administrator as well. I know you don't have a lot of time. Boy, your time is really, really short. And if you work for the government, I, you know, I hope, I hope you guys more, uh, yes? If I'm a sysadmin and I don't want someone Okay, how can you prevent somebody from having access to this tool? You go, you right click on the folder that it's in, or the best, I'm sorry. I want to protect my server, but I want to keep people from being able to recuperate all that information off of my server if they don't already have a valid account on my server. Well, with that, what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to shut down probably 139. But if you do that, then how, is, how are people going to authenticate? Yes, go ahead. There's a, there's a key in the registry that will allow you to turn off enumeration. And people can still make, still make a, a, a connection, but they can't enumerate from that connection. So, yeah, they won't get, they won't get the information to try to try to Okay. Right, but you gotta 
Okay, the, the question or the, or the comment basically is to turn off remuneration inside of your server so that somebody else sitting on an NT box remotely is not going to use this tool as they get it for free and then uh, scam all this information off of your box. Uh, good question. Uh, apparently it's on TechNet, uh, TechNet and uh, if you do a search on it, it'll, uh, it, it'll come up. Yes. I mean, wait. This. Do you have to run this tool as an administrator equivalent? Do you have to run the tool as administrator equivalent? Yes, you do. Um, but the one thing you might be worried about if you're uh, administering multiple domains, if you have um, uh, Yeah, you can only run this on one PDC at a time. You cannot run this on your entire domain. Right, exactly. And, and that, that's why I was kind of c concerned about the remuneration. Yes? Yes, a null session attack, is that, that's what I had mentioned earlier. He was just saying about the null session attack that I had mentioned earlier. Yes, For, remotely on an NT box, you can establish a null session with, any, with, with the server that's over there. I mean, you want exploits on NT. You know, uh, Greg Hoagland and I were sitting out there at lunchtime and we were talking about an exploit that we had done in, uh, at the conference in Reno, Nevada, where all you do is set up a server, an NT server, remotely and then it, it's going, um, oh gosh, I can't remember what we, the, anyway, what it does is it, you set it up as a BDC and, and it, it um, replicates on your, on your system. So you actually, and then, then if you want to, I mean, you can knock the other system down and people are authenticating on you. So you can get passwords right and left on an LM hash, especially. I mean, well, it doesn't matter. You have the SAM file right there. So you can sit up and run loft crack against it all day long. You know, so, I mean, that's, that's something that you need to worry about and you need to look at. But, you know, th those are something, some things that your uh, information security officer or you as a sysadmin needs to do. Yes? I'm sorry, what? I still didn't get that. Secure ID for NT login. Secure ID for NT login. Oh, using like a third party login? No, at this point, no. And part of the reason, like I mentioned before, it's the doctors. You got doctors and lawyers who, who feel that they don't, they cannot be bothered with that, okay? They just cannot be bothered with that. And until there's a liability placed on the doctors, until there's a liability placed on the doctors that makes them accountable for securing patient information or for securing client information, then nothing's going to happen to them. Okay? And believe me, if you go to a doctor and tell them, hey, I got patient information, write me out a check for $4,999.99. Do you think he's going to go to the CIA or FBI? Well, if he does, what's going to happen to him? He'll probably lose his license. So it's probably cheaper to you. One of those uh, risks of business, he'll probably just write you out a check for $4,999.99. Now, am I encouraging you to do that? No, I don't encourage anybody to do that, okay? I guess I should have put a waiver up here <coughs> and a disclaimer. Yes? The, uh, the law specifies the damage is five grand, but extortion or blackmail at any level, even a dollar, just so you know, is a crime. Right. My point, though, is that even if you do something like that, the doctors, the doctors themselves, for release of patient information poorly secured like that, will probably lose their license or, sadly, their reputation, which is even worse. Yes. That's the the weakest link. That's a great one. Uh, the, the question is, is how do you make end users, uh, brain dead end users, learn to, to make stronger passwords? Well, one of them, of course, is to put in the passfelt.dll. I mean, that's going to sort of force them to do it. It's going to tick them off, but it's going to force them to do it. And the other thing is just training. 
training users on a regular basis. What's that DLL? It's called passfelt.dll. It's on, uh, what is it, SP2 on up? And I think SP4 has got a better fix on the old stuff. What website is it on? The passfelt.dll? Well, you can get it off Microsoft's site, but it's on, if you're running NT, it's, it's on your SP, uh, what is it, SP2 on up? But I think, like I said, SP4 has got a fix to something that was on SP2. Any other questions? Yes. Will that tool dump ACL let you do modeling? So it will let you set up the groups and policy and then uh, play, uh, see how they would play out on the network. So after you just dump the report, can you set up the policy and see how they would play out on the shares? Oh, yes. Okay, the question is, can you do modeling with this, like engineer your, your, your whole topology there? Policy Create policy. policy. Right. Yes. Yeah, that would be an excellent idea to do something like that. You know, set it up on a test environment, see how it runs, set up all your groups and all your individual accounts and everything. That works fine. And just move it over into the real environment once it works. Yes. Excellent idea. Any other questions? Okay, it's hot. Man, I'm hot, and I feel sorry for the people over at CDC, because not only are they hot, but they're also going to get a virus. So, thank you very much. <laughs>